Hello guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. First of all, I want to wish all you guys and girls a very happy and prosperous new year. I want all of you guys and girls to get amazing cloud jobs and have an amazing cloud career in this new 2021. So end of January, February, March is super hot season for recruitment. So I made a separate video on what exact skills and roadmap you should follow if you want to go after roles like DevOps engineer, DevOps architect, solutions architect. I'm going to put uh, a link to that video up top. In this video, I want to double down on uh, one of the critical areas, uh, both for interviewing and also for real world application. How to deploy Kubernetes applications using CICD on AWS. So in this video, we are going to learn two separate uh, CI-CD flows on deploying your uh, containerized Kubernetes application uh, using CI-CD and using uh, AWS CI-CD services such as uh, code deploy, code pipeline, etc. All right, with that being said, uh, let's get started with CI-CD flow one for EKS. All right, so let's start from the beginning. Let's say you, the almighty developer, uh, the first step, uh, checks your code in, checks your application code into a code repository. And then again, I'm showing GitHub and AWS code commit. Uh, but if you're using Bitbucket or any other code repository, uh, you can use those as long as code build uh, supports it. Next, uh, code build is automatically going to get triggered as soon as you check in a new code. Uh, and then everything in code build is uh, determined uh, by a file called uh, build spec. Uh, so in build spec, you tell code build uh, what to do. So in next step, code build takes your application code uh, and then uh, install the dependencies that it needs if there is any, and then dockerizes your code into a container image. And then it pushes that container image uh, into the image repository, uh, which in this case, we are using Amazon ECR. And the fourth step, uh, what it does is uh, it deploys the image into Amazon EKS. So the first part where the developer checks in the code, is pretty straightforward. Uh, so let's focus uh, into this part, right? And see how things are happening. Okay, so uh, like I mentioned before, uh, buildspec.yaml is a file uh, that determines what steps code build is gonna do and you can run any bash command from the from this build spec file. And you can run any bash command uh, from this build spec file. So that's pretty powerful, right? Uh, uh, so what it happens is a container will come up and you can pick the container image. In our case, it's Ubuntu, so you can run any Linux bash command. Uh, so we will run the Docker build command a Docker build, and then you can tag the container image uh, with the tags that you want to use. In my case, we are using repository underscore URI and, the, and then a tag. And you're gonna see all this in action during the demo, so it will become more clear. Uh, but at this point, uh, we create the container image uh, from your application, and then we use the command docker push, and then we push it to ECR. Uh, so this is kind of like a checkpoint, right? So at this point, the application container image goes to Amazon ECR uh, and it's tagged and everything. And now let's say you have a, a deployment manifest file uh, in the same repository. Let's say hello kubernetes.yaml and note this image, right? It says image colon container underscore image. So what we're gonna do is replace this container underscore image in this uh, hello kubernetes.yaml uh, with the container image that we just pushed to ECR with the proper tags, right? Uh, so after you run this uh, SED command, uh, this uh, hello kubernetes.yaml file should have the actual uh, container image of your application uh, with tags and everything in here. So at this point, you have a deployment file that you can run, which will deploy this to your EKS cluster. So how do you deploy the manifest file? So we have seen this multiple times in previous demos. So you run kubectl apply minus F 
and then the name of the file and that's gonna get the new image deployed into your ECAS cluster. So uh, that's the overall flow. However, uh, there are some prerequisites that you need to do. <laughs> There's always some stuff that, that needs to be done, right? And since this code build uh, is, is uh, pushing the image into ECR, uh, deploying into EKS, uh, so there are some IAM steps that you need to do, like this code build and the code pipeline in general has to have some uh, IAM policy, which should allow it to do all these tasks. Uh, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so this uh, code commit and code build uh, is part of AWS code pipeline. So the basic requirement that this code pipeline, uh, IAM service role that this code pipeline is running with, uh, requires access to uh, code build and code commit uh, because we are using these two services in code pipeline. And then uh, the more intricate things is the IAM role that code build is running with, it requires ECR access so that it can push the container image into Amazon ECR and it should be able to STS assume role uh, to a role, let's name this role kubectl role. And this kubectl role has kubectl access to cluster using AWS auth config map. And the reason we don't want to give this code build role uh, direct access to do kubectl is because uh, this role is gonna have a lot of stuff, right? It has to have the ECR, it will have some logging stuff. Uh, so we don't want to uh, do everything in that role. And since this kubectl role's sole purpose is to give access to cluster, this can be reused. Uh, so maybe now code build is pushing to EKS. Uh, so this code build can do STS assume into this role and do it. Uh, but maybe tomorrow some other EC2 or some other uh, service wants to do the same. So you don't have to maintain all these uh, five, 10 different roles, uh, which has access to push it to EKS. Instead, they can all do STS assume, which is one line of code in IAM, and they could assume this kubectl role. And this kubectl role allows the other services uh, to run kubectl into uh, this Amazon EKS. And again, how do we do this? We do this by including this role into AWS auth config map. Okay, so that's the CI-CD flow one. Uh, so before we jump into CI-CD flow two, uh, just a request. If you guys and girls are finding this video useful and you want to see a content like this, please uh, click that big fat like button, uh, subscribe, comment, let me know what other kind of videos you want me to make. And uh, my wife gave me this uh, coffee cup I wanted to show you guys and girls. It's called uh, Hustle Juice. So basically, you guys and girls got to hustle if you want amazing jobs. Let me know what kind of videos you want me to make for you and let's do it together. Let's have an amazing 2021. 2020 was uh, kind of shitty. So I have high hopes and high expectations for 2021. So let's all do this together. Uh, all right, uh, enough out of my soapbox now. Uh, let's jump into uh, CICD flow two. Uh, so this is another alternate flow for deploying changes to EKS. All right, so let's go through it. So the initial steps are same as CI/CD flow one. Uh, so the developer checks in the change code to a code repository, either GitHub or AWS code commit. And then code build gets triggered through CloudWatch event. And then in the code build using build spec file, you build the Docker container image from the code. And then code build will push the image to Amazon ECR. Then code pipeline will invoke a Lambda function which will use a AWS SDK, like if you are using Python, you will use Boto3 and Python SDK to update the deployment object in EKS. So if you remember in the CI/CD flow one, code build was doing that part, right? Because code build, code build was updating the deployment.yaml file and put the newly tagged image from ECR into the deployment file, and then uh, it will do a kubectl command in the code build. Here, the Lambda is doing that. It is gonna change the deployment object in the Amazon EKS, and, what, and then what's gonna happen is since the deployment object is changed, EKS will fetch the new container from the ECR and perform a rolling update of the deployment object. So this is actually an open source 
method. So this is also called as AWS dash cube dash code suite. Uh, so all the code is here and the architecture also is given. You can simply clone this repo and then just run it and it should work as is. So really nothing needs to be tweaked here. And now that you guys and girls understand how the CICD flow one works, this one should be pretty simple to understand as well. All right, guys and girls, uh, those are the two flows. Again, uh, if you found this video useful, please click that big fat like button, comment and subscribe. It really helps me and the channel grow. Also, please uh, let me know what other videos you want me to make uh, for your cloud career for this 2021. Also, if you're interested looking for a course to get started on Kubernetes and EKS, feel free to check out my Udemy course. It has pretty good ratings and good feedback from students. But if you, if you already have a course, if you're not interested, that's fine as well. Uh, all right, with that being said, uh, again, Happy New Year, and I'll see you guys and girls in the next lecture. Bye.